Hello, I've had several comments on how to use the dental diagnosis and the aesthetic restorative dentistry books in a consultation. Well, I am I'm spoon feeding you how to do this. So how do I use these books with our camera system? You can watch the video in dentistrymasterclasses.com on how I do a new patient interview, examination, and consultation using this camera system, the retractors, the mirror, the books, and PowerPoint cases. But let's talk about how we do it. The first thing I do is show the patient photographs in the book. This is a patient that we'll be talking about. We'll be talking about this case and a couple other cases. This person comes into my office. You can watch the video on how I do an interview, exam, and consultation. So she's come in for treatment. The objective, your objective should be to give a patient enough information that they can make an informed decision about what, if anything, they want to do. I'm not selling them anything. I want them to be able to understand what's going on with their teeth to the point that they can see what I'm telling them is the truth. So I really want them to be able to diagnose themselves. So the first thing I'm going to do with her is show her these books. This is decay. This is how you want to catch it right here. Just when it's into the dentin. This is really small. You can barely see that. This is larger, but when I remove that enamel, this one look like that and this one was decayed into the nerve of the tooth so I had to do endodontics in a crown. This was a Baylor student just those little pinpoint dots in the enamel. I had to do 10 root canals and 10 crowns on him so the, th the point I want to make with patients is decay is like a termite in the wall. It makes a small opening in the wall then it gets behind the outer part of the wall and eats the sheetrock. The small, the, the softer dentin. This is how it goes from here. Then once it gets into the dentin, it blows up. That's what happened there. These are old fillings, mercury fillings. This shows how they don't seal to the teeth and they leak. Even if the filling is in the tooth, the bottom part's wider than the top part. So it'll stay in there and wallow around in the tooth for a long time. This is decay under these mercury fillings. This one was decayed into the nerve of the tooth. I had to do a root canal and a crown. This one I got to in time and I could do, and it was small and there was good tooth all the way around it so I could do a uh, tooth colored filling. These are cracked teeth. So I'm showing the patient this, remember, before they see their teeth. So this shows that little crack, that dark crack on the distal of that filling on the second molar. Well, once I take that filling out, here's the crack that's into the nerve of the tooth and I have to do a root canal and a crown. Here's another crack on the distal of that tooth. Once I take that out, there's the crack into the nerve of the tooth. I have to do a root canal and a crown. Here's decay under old crowns. This shows how when you have decay, at the margin of a crown, there has to be a point where the crown ends and the tooth begins. So that decay started right there and it ate its way up under that crown. This is especially true if a crown is older because back then we used zinc phosphate cements and they tended to wash out. The composite cements don't do that so much. These are other crowns, old crowns that were leaky, decay. That's what's left. This shows decay between teeth. How there's always decay on two teeth when there's decay between teeth. This shows uh, chipped or worn incisal edges of teeth and how you repair it. This shows the patient why everybody almost should need a night guard, should have a night guard because you rub your teeth together and get that little thin edge and then you break it off. So you can place bonded composite to restore it, but if you don't have a night guard, you're going to do the same thing all over again. These are large fillings in teeth, and this shows how 
this side of the tooth is not connected to that side and you fracture that off, the cracks in the teeth. And so if they're large fillings, and especially if they're cracks in the teeth, you would consider placing crowns on those teeth to hold the sides of the teeth together so you don't fracture it. Now this was a smaller filling and it had good tooth structure all the way around it with no cracks so I could replace that with a tooth colored filling. This shows wear. That's why you want to have a night guard so you don't wear your teeth away. Then this is a section on veneers. Hypocalcification, we veneered her teeth. Spaces between the teeth, we veneered the teeth on this gentleman. Wear. We veneered lots of different veneer cases. This is on periodontal crown lengthening and veneering. Several cases on that. This is on old uh, porcelain to metal crowns and how it, a lot of times you see dark shine through and they just don't look natural. We've replaced them with uh, lithium to silicate crowns. Again, same thing. Replace these crowns. This is my wife's teeth broken in a sailboat accident, how you can restore those. This is avulsion of a tooth. This is a cowboy from East Texas and he got between a cow and her calf and it got its horn in his mouth and it knocked that tooth in his mouth and knocked that tooth out. So we've grafted that socket and then placed a fixed bridge here. This is just on fixed bridges. This is on a implant supported bridge. This guy's teeth were knocked out in a traffic accident. We veneered his upper teeth. It's on decay. That's why you don't want to drink Cokes. So this guy, this fellow drank three Cokes a day for three or four years and it just completely destroyed his teeth and this is after we restored him. Another reason you want to wear a night guard or a dental sleep apnea snoring device, he'd worn his teeth away and restored them here. Severe wear. So my daughters got night guards when they stopped growing at about age 16 and I told them if you'll wear these the rest of your life, your teeth will be this length the rest of your life. Sharon and I have had night guards our whole married life. I now have a dental sleep apnea snoring device, but anything between your teeth so you don't wear the teeth away. Just other complex restorative cases. These are bleaching. So I show the patient these ahead of time along with PowerPoint cases. And then we look at her case. And I say, do you see anything that you'd like to fix or change or that you're not happy with? And so she tells me these are no prep veneers, lumineers. And she said, I'm really unhappy with them. I lost three of them within the first two weeks of having them, and now I've lost another one, so I want to go with conventional veneers. I'm not a fan of no prep veneers. Because if you put something on teeth and you don't take something away, you're going to have a fat tooth. And if you just put it on the facial surface without including the interproximal or the incisal, those veneers will swim and there's not a definitive seat. So for a lot of reasons, I don't like them. You can see the stain around the veneers, but she's looking at these photographs and she's wanting to replace these and also restore her others. So I'm not pushing for anything. I don't care what she does as long as it's something I can stand behind. That's what I tell the patient. It doesn't matter to me what you do, but I don't, I'm not going to patch it up because once I patch it up and you break it, your problem is my problem. So I'm not going to do anything I can't stand behind, but if it's something I can stand behind, I'm open to anything. But I want her to have enough information that she can make an informed decision about what, if anything, she wants to do and she can pretty much diagnose herself. So you can see we've got wear here on the lower anterior teeth she's wanting to veneer those teeth then you can see the margins the leakage around these the no prep veneers to me are just messy they're just messy they're leaky they're stainy they're they collect food debris and plaque it's a way of doing something quick but my 
my thought has always been at some point, somebody doesn't just want a cheap hamburger. They want a good hamburger. You know, they don't want a dollar fifty hamburger, French fries, and soft drink. They want to, you want to pay, you know, five to seven bucks for a hamburger, French fries, and a soft drink. You want good meat, good bread, all that type of thing. And so this is a way of doing something quick and probably a little less expensive. You can see she's got a fraction here. It just, the margins aren't good, and she's lost that one for the about the third time. So I want to take these photographs of her smiling to see how far back you can see when she smiles, because if you're changing the shade of teeth, you need to veneer back far enough that you don't have yellow natural teeth back here and lighter teeth in the front. So I want to take these shades of her smiling, her natural smile, and you can see we go back to here and those teeth were veneered ahead of time. So now we're looking at the occlusal views of the posterior teeth. And if you watch that video on what photographs to take diagnostically, I take the diagnostic photographs myself because I know what I want to see and some I'll take again a little closer up if I want the patient to have a better view of something. So you can see you've got this large mercury amalgam filling on this upper right second molar. The patient looks at that and she says, I've got decay in those teeth. Say, so, yes, you do. Now, can, I can't tell how deep that decay is any more than you can or she can. Because again, it's like a termite. But I know if it's my wife or my daughter, I want to clean that out and place a very, hopefully a very conservative composite filling in the occlusal surface of those teeth. This is the incisal. This is the lower left posterior. Now you can see the cracks in these t the tooth here and the crack here. The patient's seen the photographs in the book and it depends on what she wants to do. I said, you could go the rest of your life and never split that tooth, especially if you chew softly the first few chews of every bite. Whenever you chew, don't just chomp down even if it's beans or rice or something soft. Chew softly for two or three chews. Then if there's a rock or a bone in there, you're not going to split a tooth. If you're really careful and wear a night guard, you may just want to replace those fillings with tooth-colored fillings. But there's a, a fair chance you're going to you're going to split one of these teeth if you bite something hard. You've got an old leaky composite filling on that one. Then this is a close-up of those teeth. You can see the crack right here, crack right there, crack right there. And it just depends on how the patient feels about it. It's not an absolute. I do not say you should have a crown on that tooth. It's something to consider depending on her temperament and circumstances. This is the other side. You can see the crack right here. What this system does, it treats things proactively, not reactively. Much dentistry today is done reactively. In other words, you have wheels on a car that are going like this. Rather than tighten them up before they come off the car and the car you lose the whole axle or the car turns over, you wait till somebody splits the tooth. My temperament is to fix something before it breaks. You look at that filling, you think something is going on underneath there. I would at least take the filling out and place a tooth-colored bonded composite. But you would think about placing a crown on that tooth because a crack is usually like a crack in a windshield. Once it gets going, just over time, it keeps going, and eventually the patient bites down and goes, ooh, that hurts. Well, at that point, the crack is probably... Uh, proceeded into the nerve of the tooth. So it's the temperament of the patient. What is What are her objectives and temperaments? What's her uh, personality like? So here's the other tooth. You can see the crack right here. And then something's going on around those mercury fillings. Over time, they all pull away from the teeth. So you got a little wear and chipping right here. So she's wanting to veneer her lower anterior teeth. Now this is another case. And she didn't know what she wanted, but the photographs 
help you communicate. I'm a visual learner. If you're just telling me something, and too many times dentists have gotten in the habit, especially in these high-volume practices, they're not bad people. But it's the system of the patient comes in for an exam, they're back in the operatory, and you're trying to tell them what they, what's wrong and what needs to be done. Well, the patient can't own it because they can't see other cases like theirs in these books or your PowerPoints, and they can't see their own teeth. So she just knew she didn't like her smile and she couldn't eat. Well, you can see when you have this kind of decay, you know the person is drinking Coca-Cola, Mountain Dew, or sucking on mints. Now, what's wrong with replacing the posterior teeth in this case? Because she's been missing this t these teeth so long, these upper teeth have super erupted. And when they super erupt, not only do the teeth super erupt, but the alveolar process super erupts. So you don't have enough space down here to place any teeth. So you think, what is the treatment for a case like this? A potential treatment is all on four or all on six actually removing the teeth. She doesn't really have anything going on the bottom. And these teeth are super erupted to the point that you really can't restore the posterior without taking the top teeth out or cutting them back. You'd have to cut them back to right here and do endodontics and crowns on all those posterior teeth. And so you get into a really big job and there's a point when I look at one of these cases, it's just a train wreck that in my mind, I start hearing Don Meredith back on Monday Night Football when the game was over and he'd start singing, turn out the lights, the party's over. When I look at these cases like this, I, th I start from doing complex restorative cases and full mouth reconstructions every week. I think, golly, that would be a huge job to try to restore this so it looks good and functions well and it's like a house damaged in a hurricane. Some, you could fix the house if the person really wanted to, but the s carpets are soaked, the walls are soaked, the hardwood floors are soaked, they've got termites, the roof's blown off. By the time you do that restorative job on that house, it really would have been better to take three bulldozers at the curve and knock it down and start all over. And in a case like this, a consideration would be take out all the teeth and do all on floor or implant supported uh, removable dentures, either removable or all on floor, of course, doesn't come in and out. So when I'm using the books and my PowerPoint cases and the photographs of the patient's teeth, I'm really just having a conversation. I'm from West Texas and I grew up around most of my family was ranchers and farmers. So a conversation was a part of the entertainment. So I love a conversation and that's really what I'm doing at a com consultation appointment. I'm not pushing for anything. I'm just informing and the patient may say, what would you do? Well, if they ask me what I would do, I'll tell them what I would do. And in this case, some might see if you put implants down here, by the time you put the abutment in, you don't have any room for the crown. The teeth don't look good. They're decayed. She's missing all the teeth, super eruption. If it was me or my wife, I would take out the teeth and I would do all on four or all on six just to get a fresh start. Now here's another guy. Now this is a rattlesnake under the porch. If you think you're going to restore this guy with anything, you're crazy. I mean, this is an Indy 500 car. You think of an Indy 500 car are restored by the finest mechanics but by the end of the race they're just beaten up well look what this guy has done to his teeth he's bro broken all the porcelain off of these he's worn the porcelain down to the metal what can you do for this guy remembering you do not want the patient's problem to become your problem you're leading a very good life he's the guy with the problem 
I want to help him if I can, but I'm not going to make his problem my problem, meaning what? If I put restorations on these teeth, say he decides he's not going to wear his night guard or his dental sleep apnea snoring device, he's going to beat the heck out of my restorations, and then he's going to look to me to replace them probably for free. So you really want to tighten this one down before you do anything for him because, and if he's a young person, that means he's going to live a long time. He's going to be doing this a long time, and you could have a tiger by the tail. I mean, you'd get tired of seeing him once every week or two with a broken restoration. So part of what I want to show you is which ones do you run, not walk, before you restore them. Don't think you're 25 years old. Yeah, I'd like to do that. How do you think I know to tell you this? I did that kind of stuff when I was your age. So when you see this severe wear, this is a trick. It's funny, every time I give a seminar, somebody always starts coming down. Somebody always comes down at the end of the seminar with models that aren't mounted in their hands, and they say, real quick, could you sh tell me how to do this? It's always a severe wear case. Well, those are the bad boys. Unless you have it locked up tight, that you are not going to restore the broken restorations for free when they break them. And I mean, you write it in bold and underline it. You do not want to take this on. You want the problem to remain his problem, and you're just doing the best you can based on the circumstances to get him out of a jam. But don't take that on as your problem. Write it down and tighten it up because he is going to break his teeth just like he did before you got to it. So in other words, these books are for sale. I don't care if you buy them or not, but if you want to, we, uh, you can buy these in the link below. That's Dental Minute. These techniques work and they work every time. Do you want to get CE credit while you're watching Dr. Cutler's training videos? I know the answer is yes. So click the link in the description below at dentistrymasterclasses.com. It only costs $20 per month. And right now you can join for 99 cents. This is a steal. You're not going to want to miss this deal.